Hello everyone, I'm Little McGriddle, and welcome back to Choice of Broadsides. Last time I left it off, it just got introduced and we went through the introduction of the game, but today we're going to progress more into the story, so we're going to get started now. With that out of the way, let's get back to the battle. You've dealt with the injured in a fashion. Now you need to keep firing your guns. But in the midst of all the excitement, what's the next step? Wait, 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 what should we do? Swab the boar, ram in the powder, place the wad wadding on the powder, load the shot, run out the gun and fire, or I have no idea. I, I seriously have no idea what's going on, but I think we should do something more smart. Keep firing your guns. What's the next step? Uh, I think we should load the shot. In order to fire, you kind of need, need to load the shot, now don't you? Shot! You yell. The woman under your command ram in a shot and run out the gun. The gun carriage bounces on the hull of the ship. The gun is ready to fire. At the last second, however, you realize that something is wrong. When your women rammed in a shot, it didn't go as deep into the bore as it should have. A fact you noticed because of your high gunnery, you must have loaded the gun with an extra cannonball. If you fired it like this, it might explode. Well, shit, I'm sorry guys, I didn't mean to do that. It's embarrassing, but it could have been much, much worse. You give orders for your women to insert the screw and to clear the load from the gun manually. And after a delay of a few minutes, you are able to return the gun to service. The lieutenant commanding the broadside noticed, however, and your patronage suffers slightly. Well, shit. Crap. Well, let's just keep going. The battle rages on, but finally the gullish ship hauls down its colors and surrenders. Yeah, we did it, guys. We did it. Yeah, they surrendered. That's great. In the aftermath of the battle, a young midship woman runs up to you. Captain's compliments, ma'am, and she asks you to report to the quarter deck. When you get to the quarter deck, the captain looks over you, at you, sorry. Madam Barton, I'm rating you as an acting lieutenant. Take a section of 20 women that cross to the prize and assume command. Make any necessary repairs and set sail for any Albonish. Albionish port? Is that what that guy's? Is that what it says? I don't know, I'm sorry if I got that wrong. But, uh... Yeah! Did you just get promoted? I'm acting lieutenant. Aye aye, ma'am. Thank you, ma'am. You quickly order. You quickly gather your women and head across on your first command. Sweet, bruh! We're in our first command. We're doing good so far. Next chapter. But how many chapters are in this, I'm wondering. Because I don't know. As you prepare to leave courageous, you run into Madam Bryce, the second lieutenant. Well, 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 acting Lieutenant Barton, she says, grinning wildly and slapping you on the back. I'll know you'll do smashingly with your first command. I have the utmost confidence in you. Thank you, ma'am, you reply, touching your hat in salute. I don't have a hat right now, but yeah, okay. Just at that moment, First Lieutenant Piggott rounds the corner. Madam Barton, she remarks, somewhat stiffly. Fine piece of luck you've had. Piggott, with over 25 years of experience. Oh, boy. That girl has been doing it for quite a while. Is by far the most senior lieutenant on board, perhaps in the whole fleet. But it's not to her credit, she's too incompetent to earn a promotion to commander. She's watched countless younger, more competent lieutenants pass her by while she racks up years of valuable experience. All she has to show for it is the power to boss the other lieutenants around imperiously, and she rarely misses an opportunity. Now, see there, I, no, that's not, that's 25 years of experience, but, uh, I forget what incompetent means. Oh, wait, so she hasn't earned a promotion to commander? Okay, so, sorry guys, I got a little confused. 
Luck has not a bit to do with it, I say, Bryce continues, ch counters cheerfully. Well, go on, then. Don't want to keep the prize waiting. Aye, aye, ma'am. You make your way across the prize ship with your detachment of twenty women. You are the only officer, but you have Jones, the mistress's mate, with you as your second in command. The Gaulish ship is a thirty-six gun frigate, a square rigged three mast ship, with an ordinary crew complement of some two hundred and fifty women. Your detachment of twenty will be sufficient to sail the prize. Of course, warships carry much larger crews than similarly sized merchant ships because of the need to staff the broadsides, as well as to lim have women available for detached duties, such as prize crews, and of course, the large crew size allows for a substantial number of casualties before the ship is incapacitated. The long and short of it is that you can fairly easily sail the frigate, but your prisoners outnumber you roughly 10 to 1, even taking into account the substantial losses they took for you striking before striking their colors. As you arrive, you quickly send some of your women to bring some bring the prisoners below and to lock them in the hold, where they will spend the rest of the voyage. Wait, prisoners? Why do we have prisoners on the ship? Wait, guys, were you paying attention when I was reading that? Did we were saying something about prisoners? Where are the prisoners? So right now, I have no clue. But uh, shall we continue? Yes, next. I don't know. A Gaulish officer, no more than a few years older than yourself, approaches you and offers her sword and surrender. She addresses you in Gaulish. Um, I'm sorry, I don't understand what you're saying. Her words sound like so much gibberish to you. Hey, hey that's how I talk all the time. Sorry. <laughs> you were never very good with languages and never really had the opportunity to learn Gaulish, even if you had wanted to. I cannot speak your language, ma'am, you say to the enemy officer. <coughs> ah, I see, she responds, slowly in Albanish. Am I saying that right? <laughs> I speak your language a little, ma'am. Pardon my misunderstandings? Please, ma'am, continue. I am Lieutenant Velenvu... Oh, uh, I'm sorry. Oh boy, I just butchered that. Of the Gaulish Republican Navy. In battle, higher lieutenants were all killed and the captain wounded. I am now highest active officer of this ship. But you are one of the prisoners. Uh, wait. Uh, oh. <laughs> I am acting Lieutenant Honor Barton of HMS Courageous. I have been placed in command of this prize. Wait, so you won this boat as a prize? Or... I'm not getting any of this. I'm sorry, guys. A slight flash of resentment crosses her face as you use the word prize, but she quickly, quickly suppresses it. Yes, I offer you my... I do not know the right word in your language. My parole? My word that I will not seek to escape? We use the word parole as well. Your word of honor as a gentlewoman, you mean. Ah, uh, yes. You have it exactly, ma'am. Do you accept Lieutenant Venelinavu's parole? Oh, of course she's a gentlewoman and would never think of breaking her word. I suppose she's probably less dangerous after giving her parole than in the hold trying to escape. I'm not returning her sword, though. Well, that's kind of rude. Normally I would, but given how few women I have, I cannot afford to. She is a captive and one of the enemy. Into the hold with her. Well, I don't want to put her in the hold with the other prisoners, because... Well, but she is a woman, but she gave her word of parole. She is a gentlewoman, after all. Um, I don't want to break her word. But I, 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 don't, I don't want to give her a sword back, because, you know, I don't want her to feel defenseless. I wouldn't take her sword away. So I think we're going to go with, of course, she is a gentlewoman and would never think of breaking her word. <clears throat> of course, I accept your parole. You hand her sword back to her. Oh, good. At least I was nice enough to do that. Producing a grateful smile. I trust you will join me in the captain's cabin for dinner? With pleasure, ma'am. Thank you. Jones approaches you a short while later. So that's it then, ma'am? 
the bloody Gaul spends hours trying to kill us to kill a lot of good women, and then after the battle, it's all a nicey nicey. Her lot murdered Davies, but we're not. So, but we're supposed to not care after the battle is over. Uh, did I just make a mistake? I think I just screwed us all over by uh not putting her in the hold. Oh well, we'll find out. How do you respond? I explain myself to Jones. Jones is just a mistress's mate, and I'm an officer. I tell her to drop it. How dare one of my ratings questions my decisions? I have her flogged for her insubordination. Well, I don't know. I think I should, I don't know, flog her for insubordination because you're not supposed to question your officers, are you? I don't know. Hunter, you shout. A moment later, Hunter, the bosun's mate assigned to your prize crew, runs up to you. Ma'am, gather the women to witness punishment. Jones is ha- Oh, God, no. Oh, yeah, well, we're off to a wonderful start in this series. Shit. Oh, my God. I didn't know I'd have Jones lash for insubordination. Okay, continuing on. Jones is to have 20 lashes for insubordination. Aye aye, ma'am. Hunter quickly gathers your, your small prize crew together. Two of the other women pulls Jones across one of the gratings of the ship and strip her off her shirt. Ooh. Hunter pulls out her cat on nine tails, a whip with many stiff cords to, of leather. She swings hard at Jones's back. Jones cries out in agony. <coughs> Sorry, there's a little tickle in my throat. And by the end of her flogging, her back is bloody from the numerous wounds the cat has cut in her back. Oh, cat? Wait, what? What? I'm Jones gingerly puts her shirt back on, wincing in pain. You feel confident that you have firmly asserted your control over your crew. Still, the look of hatred that Jones gives you after the flogging is unmistakable. You'll have to keep a close eye on her in the future. Oh, no. Oh, I'm so sorry, Jones. I think... I think we just screwed ourselves over and we might have made a mistake. Now we have one of our crew members hating us, and I don't know if she might try and hurt me or injure me next because of what I did. I don't know. <laughs> I have no idea. A few days later, Lieutenant Villeneuve, I'm sorry, I don't know how to pronounce that, comes to you with a question. Ma'am, she inquires, may we have some medicine supplies? One of our crew has broken a bone badly. <coughs> she may die. Well, I'm not that heartless. I'm going to provide medical supplies. Why would I deny it? It's just... Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. You are most certainly welcome. The next several days pass smoothly. You get used to the routine of the passing watches. Even with the new experience of commanding the prize ship, the process of trimming the sails, taking their bearings, and setting the course is nerve-wracking. Never before you have decisions, have your decisions been the final word, leading a ship either on a safe and direct course to your destination or towards disaster. But the weather is blessedly easy, with a steady breeze but clear skies, and you go through the process of relying on your training and your experience. On the fifth day, Jones comes to you with a disturbing piece of news. Oh no, what have we found? I found something below deck that I need to bring to your attention, ma'am. What is it, Jones? Oh no, we're screwed. We're all gonna die. Ah, I just went blurry. Sorry, guys. Give me a minute. Ah, it's still blurry. Oh, I don't know what's going on. Ow, what the hell? Okay. Oh, mm. <clears throat> We're taking in water in the hold. We'd missed the hole at first because it's beneath the water line. Sure enough, she's right. You order your crew to start pumping out the water with Jones's help. We managed to patch the hole in time to prevent any further damage to the ship. Okay, good. At least we were not going to sink. Why do you think Jones pointed out the damage to you? <laughs> well, I don't know. Maybe she did it to... Oh, that's odd, but... 
She might have did it to save her own neck because, to, well, to not get on my bad side again in case she got punished again. Or did she do it out of duty? Because it's her job, isn't it? I don't know. I guess I, I guess we'll go with she did it out of duty. Perhaps you're right. I am. <laughs> On the sixth day, one of the women calls down to the deck. Sail to Lee! What sort of ship is it? You call back as you search with your spyglass. After a minute, the, sailors call, the sailor calls back. He looks to be a Gaulish sloop of war, ma'am. A sloop of war? That presents you with a difficult choice. A sloop carries no more than twenty guns and often fewer. What's more, a sloop's guns will be of lighter weight than those of a frigate. You had a few, you had a full crew, you could easily capture him, but with only a prize crew at your disposal, the sloop would have a much greater rate of fire and substantially larger number of women. Oh, sorry guys, the muscles in my arm just randomly started twitching for no reason. <laughs> so sorry. How do you want to handle this? Engage the enemy loop directly? Sloop? I feel like I'm gonna <laughs> end up talking with a lisp. <laughs> you know. Attempt to capture the enemy sloop through a clever ambush. That probably got so many people mad. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm so sorry. Oh, avoid the enemy sloop. It's not worth risking the more valuable prize in a battle that would likely go badly. Clever ambush. But, you know, that doesn't always work out. I think I'll just avoid the enemy sloop if I can. It takes some careful sailing. Did I just? Okay, now I... It takes some careful sailing, but you escape from the Gaulish sloop. Oh, sorry. When you sail into Chestport a few days later, you feel an enormous sense of relief to be under the protection of the harbor's mighty guns. The captain that commands the port commands. Whoops, sorry. The captain that commands the port commends you for avoiding capture by the Gaulish sloop. A few months later, HMS Courageous returns to port and you rejoin his company. You take up your duties as an acting lieutenant with the added confidence from the successful command of a prize ship. Not to mention a few pounds of spending money from the value of the prize. A midshipwoman's mid share isn't much, but it's still enough to earn you a small amount. That's good, but uh... So that's the end of the chapter, and I think I'm going to end it there. Sorry if I'm ending on a cliffhanger, but, uh, yeah, I'm actually really excited about playing this. I mean, earlier on I wanted to play it, but I didn't want to play it without, without going through it with you guys, because it seems like a really interesting game. Like, I really like choose-your-own-adventure style kind of games, and this is... It's a really good one, but um, yeah, so we'll get to the next chapter next time in the next, next video, but for now, thank you so much for watching. If you liked it, hit that button down below, and uh, like always, I will catch you all in the next video. Stay awesome. Bye!